Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to the Wool C Knitting Channel. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and today I was thinking of filming a knitting vlog slash what I knit in a week video. I really enjoy seeing this particular type of knitting vlog, and it's sunny, I had a wonderful weekend, I went to a cabin with my boyfriend, so I'm feeling rested and reinvigorated about my knitting projects. I'm feeling a little bit more of my energy coming back, and I want to share it with you guys. I have a few projects on the go, kind of interesting points, and I think it might be fun to track what I do in a week, in a relatively quiet, typical week for me, and see how far I get. So right now it is... 12.09. It's my lunch break. I haven't done any knitting today. I'm not someone who usually wakes up in time to do some cute, cozy morning knitting with my coffee. I'm a roll out of bed, put the coffee on, do my skincare and log into work kind of person. And so I'm going to have the last of my healthy adult pre-prepped meals that I made last week before I went away and do some knitting. But before that, I thought I should catch you up on where I kind of am in my knitting right now, my priorities and the projects I expect to be mostly working on over the course of this vlog. So first, and the thing I wanna work on right now, I think is my second swirl mitten right here, yeah. So this is a self-drafted mitten pattern that I'm hoping to release as a free pattern as a thank you for 5,000 subscribers. It's now so completely off season and I'm torn between waiting until it's autumn again in the Northern hemisphere or just releasing it in spring in the Northern hemisphere and autumn in the Southern hemisphere. Let me know what you guys think. It's a free pattern, so timing it to like maximize profits is a complete non-issue, but I'm a little worried about finding testers and if this is going to be even interesting to you guys or just completely missing the mark. But I finally worked out how to do the thumb increases. And this is really not a long project at all. I think I could feasibly finish this, you know, today or tomorrow, depending on how busy I get with house chores. And yeah, so I think I want to work on this today. The other thing I really want to get a lot of work done on this week is my Ozetta Lakes pullover in a size medium for my brother. I gave him this as a sort of Christmas present in the way that I said, I'm going to make this for you, but you're not getting it for Christmas. You're getting the yarn for Christmas and you'll get it sometime this spring. I was really hoping to finish this bef before today so that my boyfriend could take it back to Toronto for my brother, but I encountered kind of a major issue at the bottom that like took up three days to finish the bottom rib. I'll go into it in the next podcast, which really delayed me. So now I'm just kind of finishing up the first sleeve. I don't have the second sleeve. I don't have the collar. I just have the body finished. So my hope is to finish two out of those three things by the end of this week because it's just stuck in it in the round. It's pretty chill meeting knitting or TV knitting or subtitle knitting or reading knitting. Like it's, it's I think what I wanna do when I'm doing something else. So my hope is to finish this sleeve and either the other sleeve or the double folded collar, one or the other. Um, ideally I'd finish this whole thing, but now that I can't give it to him until March anyway, there's a bit less of a rush. It's just to kind of clear this project from my pile. But this is in Barocco Vintage. And the last project that I anticipate working on over the course of this vlog is a two by two ribbed hat based on the head sock pattern, which is a free pattern by Amanda Sund. I've made this hat before as a gift and that person really likes it, wears it a lot. It's just a two by two ribbed hat. that I'm knitting in some Louise Robert Designs hand-dyed yarn in the color Poseidon. Because I want this as a hat for myself, I am trying to do a triple or a double folded triple layer brim. So it's just a lot of ribbing. You can't see because of how dark the yarn is, but I did a line of just knit stitches around here to help it fold better. And so I'm on the second of those two chunks. And yeah, whenever I don't feel like doing one by one, not one by one, whenever I don't feel like doing stockinette, or, but it's light out and so I can see my stitches here against my dark needles, this dark yarn, I've been working on this hat. So 
Those are the three projects I have on the go right now. I also have a storm sweater in need of sleeves, but it's just not really calling to me this particular lunch break. So I think I'm going to go eat my lunch, sit in the living room away from my desk, bring out the personal laptop instead of the work laptops and do some knitting. It's me. I'm checking in without my glasses because I'm using the ring light to make sure the light's okay and the whole time I tried to film this little segment check-in before the ring lights were just super obviously reflecting in my glasses and it was really distracting. But checking in to say I hit my goal for today which was to separate finish the thumb gusset shaping and separate the thumb from the hand of this mitten and i succeeded and i'm really proud of myself because this is kind of a milestone for me i have been working on this for months since the autumn and trying to work out how i needed to create this smaller spiral for the thumb and have that work out with the math and pattern and this work out with the math and pattern while also creating enough fabric where like the thumb actually fit and the hand actually fit was a big challenge for me and at times really frustrating and at times really fun but i finally did it and i have a completely finished chart and i have the written instructions so i can move on and just keep enjoying color work in the round in this spiral pattern for the rest of it but yeah i worked on this a little bit at lunch and i have been working on it since getting home from the gym and showering and eating dinner etc um but i did cut the yarn because i mean i'm still a beginner spinner i'm not very good and i think i spun this i don't know if i spun it in a direction that's bad for me in general to be knitting as a lefty or if the twist the is just isn't balanced but i tried to show you guys in the b-roll but i spent a lot of time untangling and retwisting this yarn because it's super grippy as is the main color so it really grabs onto the other strand and then this kept unplying and then replying onto itself in sort of pigtails and curly cubes that were really frustrating so the way that i fixed it is by cutting it letting the twist resettle here letting the twist resettle here going to felt them back together i untangled it from this which is easier with two ends and i have my rubber band handy to hold it and settle it again in the future before it gets as bad as it did. But in order to celebrate this, I am putting this off to the side and pivoting to my brother's lakes pullover, which is at this point just plain stocking out in the round. I finished the decreases that shape the sleeve and I put a marker here to show the point from which I need to add another five, five and a half inches of sleeve. That includes cuff, but yeah, from about there, I need another five inches. I made my boyfriend try this on a couple times to reassure me about sizing because him and my brother are only about an inch or two um, apart different in height so nathan's a pretty good barometer for how long sleeves need to be body etc and i'm really glad that i did because otherwise i think i would have made these too short uh so yeah i know from here to keep going and i want to switch to reading i've been watching youtube videos for most of this evening and since you know finishing all my chores so i'm going to knit in the round start a new ebook and do this for the rest of the evening until I need to prep my breakfast and lunch for tomorrow and go to bed. I have 
finish the stockinette on this sleeve. You will recall yesterday I was about, I don't know, here-ish. So I've knit about two and a half inches of stockinette and I've started the rib for the cuff. I'm thinking I should probably switch to Magic Loop. I have the cord ready, but they're still sitting comfortably on the small circuit. I've also done a few more rounds on my hat. I didn't do any knitting on my lunch break today because we ended up having like a team social outing uh, and that was really cute and fun. And then I had chores, but yeah, I've been knitting for the past few hours. I've been reading a book and then periodically stopping knitting and reading to complain to my friend Charlotte about this book. Will I stop reading it? No. Is complaining about the book part of the enjoyment of reading the book? Absolutely. Uh, but here we are. I'm now on the rib. I think I'll do two, two and a half inches. This, okay, so what I'm wearing right now is the exact sweater that I'm making for my brother, except in a different yarn and a different size, but it's the same pattern. So this is my lakes. I love it a whole lot. I don't normally wear it inside the house, but I'm so comfy and so cozy. I'm wearing a full thermal layer underneath in sweatpants and I'm the happiest of campers. But here I decreased just a little bit. You can see a bit of pilling. Uh, but that's, considering that I wear the sweater all the time and I've never depilled it, that's pretty good. Okay, um, here. I did one round of decreases, I think every eight or ten stitches, right before the ribbing of the sleeve. And now I'm wondering if I should, but that's not in pattern. That I just added for myself because I liked a slightly more cinched in sleeve. So I'm wondering if I should go back and do that here because right now it's not cinching but it's for a man so I'm wondering if that's considered a feminine detail that he wouldn't like and it is going to cinch anyway naturally with rib but I'm just second guessing myself a whole lot. But the original pattern doesn't have any decreasing there. And I know part of the reason why I did that rapid-ish round of decreases is because my arms are short and I just did not have the space that I needed to do the decreases that the pattern said at the rate that the pattern called for, whereas I absolutely did here. So yeah, I mean, if it's a floppy sleeve, is that gonna be a major issue for him? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna do some thinking. I might go back to this hat while I have the really helpful ring light here so I can see my stitches in this dark yarn on my dark needles. And then I'm going to take a shower. Good morning. It is Thursday. I made a whole big thing about how I'm not the kind of person who wakes up with an amount of time before work to, to serenely drink her coffee and watch a podcast and knit, but it turns out that after a week of being on my boyfriend's schedule, who is much more of a diurnal daytime person than me, I am going to bed at a reasonable hour and waking up in time to do that. So I have been watching Jenny of Future Fibers' newest video. Love her. If you don't watch her videos, I recommend. But I thought this would be a good time to catch you up on my progress. I didn't do a ton of knitting yesterday because I had an appointment in the morning to go get a consultation to see if I am eligible to get corrective laser surgery for my eyes. So I don't have to wear glasses anymore, and I am. I can't get LASIK, but I can get PRK, and I'm really excited about it. I My prescription right now is negative six in my right eye and negative 3.75 in my left eye. And both my parents had at least one eye that was negative six when they got corrective surgery, like literally almost 20 years ago now. They both solidly endorse it. So I have been waiting a long time to have insurance that'll cover part of it and the funds to pay for the rest and yeah I'm really excited um but the point of this is, is they dilated my pupils and I couldn't see 
for several hours afterwards like i went back to work i like typed all my emails at arm's length because i couldn't see close up which was unusual for me i'm very nearsighted that's normally my issue and then i just went home and like took a long nap because i had a bit of a headache from staring at a screen when my pupils were freaking huge <clears throat> So yeah, I didn't accomplish a ton. However, I finished the sleeve for my brother and I did a fair amount of knitting on this hat. You can finally see it a little bit better, but yeah, I'm getting to the second fold line and I'm at a stage where I'm not sure if I want to pick up for the collar or the next sleeve. I really should do the collar. I think it'd be a lot more interesting. The thing is, is the ball of yarn that I'm going to use for the collar, for some reason, I am fighting against the twist every step of the way. It took me like three times as long to knit the bottom rib for that reason. I even cut the yarn and started knitting from the other end at one point, and that only really saved me like four rounds of grief. Um, but I can't use the leftovers from the first sleeve. I have just the tiniest little nubbin left of yarn so I know that both the sleeves are going to take pretty much a full skein and so I have to use that unruly ball for the collar. I know there must be some way to fix it. I have not experienced, like at this point I've used four full skeins and a little bit of another in this sweater to absolutely no problems except for that one skein but because I can't figure out what the problem is and why I'm suddenly fighting against it and it's unplying and curly cueling and pigtailing I just don't want to cast on the neck, but I think it would be better. I did realize it was kind of stupid to start the sleeve without doing the collar in the first place because the collar is going, once it's in place, it's going to affect how the sleeves fit. But in my experience, typically it brings the sleeves in a little bit more because everything's kind of cinched up here. So I just knit the sleeve a little bit longer, which I think is just good practice in general for sleeves because I don't know about you guys, but I find my sleeves just shrink. I'm assuming that'll be the same for my brother, so I did his longer, and now I have to be a brave and good girl and pick up one or the other. So pick up one or the other and get this done. It is negative 11 outside right now. It's negative 20 with the wind chill, but these super cold days are the ones where we get sunshine because we don't have the cloud cover to kind of act as a blanket and keep it a little bit warmer. So I am really enjoying basking in the sunlight and I mean, we'll see if I make it to the gym tonight, but back to work I go. Okay, update. I picked up and did the sleeve cap shaping for the second sleeve of the lakes, plus, you know, a few extra rounds to get it going since it's just stocking it in the round. Mm -hmm. Happy Friday, everyone. I have an exciting update in my mitten project. I have worked on this quite a bit last night and over lunch today, but I've officially run out of my hand spun, which is the color changing yarn in my spiral mitten, which, you know, kind of stalls this project, kind of grinds me to a halt. I have options. I'm not completely out of luck when it comes to finishing this. I have started the, the decreases there's really not a lot left besides, you know, the thumb and just the little top of this mitten. And I do have this bit of singles left from when I originally plied this yarn. And then I have this right here, which is actually Merino. So this is Corydale from Maker Bee. Very some nice yarn and fibers. They're also a podcaster here on YouTube and I shopped their first fiber update. But anyway, I have, ignore this lime green bit, that was my leader. I have these singles that, well, it'll be 50% the same yarn and 50% not, that I think I'm gonna apply together and see if I can just finish off the top and get enough for the thumb. If I can't, I don't think it's the end of the world. I have more of this merino that I think is similar enough in color and tones that you can't tell and the thumb won't require a lot. But yeah, I did this as a little test to see how hard it was to spin merino. And then I just have this left over because I did a bad job separating the braid in two. And then also it's pretty lumpy bumpy, inconsistent, ranging from a pretty thin 
fingering to a pretty chunky DK. Like, look at this sucker that I have at the end here. This is really just basically a worsted. So I'm going to have to really rely on my potential testers to let me know yardages when it comes to this. However, I think the next thing I do is um, attempt to ply these together and then finish and set the yarn before I can continue, which will, I think, slow me down on being able to knit this for at least a couple days, but that's okay because I felt a lot of momentum. I got stuff done. I'm so sorry for the ring light glare. Is it better if I take off my glasses? Let me know, but very soon we won't have this problem anymore. I have my surgery booked. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the update on this. I'm really liking the color though, how it starts from the bluey lavender and then it's peach all in the middle and then it's back to the bluey lavender. Oh, so pretty. And it's different from this, which kind of did the kind of different different path. That's where I am on this. Interestingly, for the Jameson and Smith main color, which is this grassy green, I thought it would bring out the tiny hints of green in this hand spun more, but I don't think it did. I think it almost kind of muted them. There's green up here, you just can't see it. I'm still happy. I think they're very springy and cute, but interestingly, so this comes in 25 gram balls and I bought, I think two, and this is still the first one because this is really more of a sport to DK weight mitten, I guess, pattern, but I'm using a fingering weight as one of the yarns because it's creating a really nice fabric. And it's going by really quickly and really yarn efficient if you're using a fingering weight and you're just not going for as dense of a mitten. So that's been interesting to learn. I'm completely out except for my little nubbin of the 50 gram singles that I spun, but because I spin so inconsistently, I had to go up to a three millimeter for this to accommodate the really large bits, thick bits of the contrast, which has allowed for uh, efficiency with the fingering weight. Anyway, that's interesting for me to learn as I continue to spin and learn what it's like to, to knit with my hand spun. I have also officially hit the second fold of my hat. So that's exciting. Um, it's going to be double folded, so a triple layered brim. And this is really an amalgamation of the head sock pattern by Amanda Sund, the Better Now Beanie by Lily Kate France, and then I guess some inspiration from Petite Knit's Weekender hat, but I'm doing two by two rib all the way. Um, like the head sock, I'm going to use that pattern's decreases for the crown because they're very neat and tidy. And I've heard Rebecca Clow of the Crayabea podcast say that she didn't like the Weekender hats decreases. So I'm going to go with the head sock ones instead. I also like two by two more, but I like Lily Kate's triple folded brim technique. And then there's the short row that you do that's good. And I like with the folding and then I just am doing lines of knit stitches so that when you fold it's this easy pearl and basically it's just a rotat um, that doesn't follow any, any one particular pattern. I also didn't use the stitch counts in the head sock. I went with I think 112 which is not any of them but it's fitting um, and I'm really happy with this. It's also not as chunky a brim as the weekender hat but I did see the weekender hat and think okay yeah you know a ribbed hat would be nice. So credit where credit is due. Part of the inspiration is petite knit. I'm just using literally none of her pattern and all Lily Kate and Amanda's patterns and then also my brain. But it's a ribbed hat. It's not rocket science. That's where we are this Friday evening. My fun hot Friday night plans are to do several loads of laundry that are overdue and clean up a little bit before we host tomorrow because I'm going to be gone in the afternoon for a PWHL game, Professional Women's Hockey League game. It's their first year, it's very exciting. Tickets are inexpensive and the games are really fun, I'm told. This is my first time going, so very exciting. And also to read as much of the book club book as possible, which is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuko. I've had this book in my house for a month and a half since uh, the person whose turn it was to pick the book has picked this book and I was excited to read it. I got it from the library immediately and then because I knew the book club wasn't going to happen until this weekend, I put it off. Why? I couldn't tell you. I was really excited when this person picked this book. It is the kind of exact thing I love. 
um i think it's ya but it's a ya like adventure fantasy based in yoruba legend is my understanding fantastic why have i put it off why did i do that i don't know so i'm going to power through and read this whole thing tonight and tomorrow or else uh face shame face shame at book club that i'm hosting and haven't read the book for so yeah ray bearer by jordan ifuko my roommate read it earlier this week and said it was really good and really fast so woohoo all right we're rooting for me talk soon Sorry, I'm backlit. I'm not good at vlogging. I would like to say, first of all, Ray Bearer, great book. I read 220 pages last night and they flew by. It's quite the page turner. Uh, I think it's technically a YA book, so it's pretty fast writing, but the plotting is excellent. The characters are kind of whatever besides like the main people, but there's just so many that you can't really flesh out that many, but the plotting and the world building I'm really enjoying this and I think it's a duology or I at least think that this is the first book in something and I'm looking forward to reading the rest. I'm a few hours but I think I can do it. Um, two, I just want to say please do not be alarmed that you see me wearing this flannel in like most of this video. I promise I switch out my undershirts and if it doesn't get dirty and I don't sweat in it then I typically wear the same house like over shirt a few days in a row. I'm sorry if that's gross to you but I'm not going to do laundry for no reason, of course. Uh, otherwise, I knit about two inches of my sleeve last night at the widest part. So two inches is not nothing because I'm at the very beginning of where all the decreases happen and there's 12 decrease rounds um, while reading. But my back, I think I heard it at the gym combined with just really, I'm doing it right now, really poor posture sitting at tables. And so I had to switch positions while reading last night to not aggravate that at all. And that was not good for knitting. And then also my hand hurts a little bit from cramping it to knit. So I'm taking a break to clean the house in preparation for book club. And because I don't want to overburden my roommates with it since I'm disappearing this afternoon for a hockey game right before we're supposed to host and then i'm going to the hockey game so i'm just going to enjoy my protein pancakes with palm oil free hazelnut spread and strawberries and check in with you guys soon Hi, it's now Monday. I was quite delinquent and I did not film a single second of yesterday. I had a really restful Sunday and got a lot of knitting done and just things that I needed to do. Went to my workout class, saw a friend, etc, etc. And it was grim and it was great and I didn't film. So I have a little bit to catch you up on. First, I have done a short row turn on this hat. So I'm now knitting it inside out, which makes it a little bit easier to show you the two all knit rounds I did to encourage this hat to fold twice the way that I want it to to get a triple folded or a triple layer brim on my ears and on my forehead. So the reason why I did this is because I want the pearl bumps to show on the outside and have like a that little pretty pearl bump edge on the brim. And that would be on the inside out had I not done this turn and worked out great. But the thing is, is I'm going to be following the decrease instructions to shape the crown of the head sock pattern. And those you work and then turn the hat, you work them basically inside out so that you've 
turn the hat inside out once it's done to show how they're meant to look. That's not the most eloquent of descriptions, but the point is if I wanted the pearl bump to show up on the brim where I wanted it to and have the decreases look neat done inside out the way the pattern recommends, I had to turn the hat inside out now. So it's kind of back and forth and back and forth, but at this point from here, I knit, I think eight inches. I'm going to be trying it on as I go. I don't like, like, I don't like a lot of volume at the top of my hats. Ever since Inga of Knitting Tradition said that to her it looks like the end of a condom, I haven't been able to unsee that. So I'm going to do my best to avoid that. But I do like a teensy bit of volume because sometimes you just need that extra space or when you need to tug the hat as low on your head as possible as protection from the elements. And that's about where I am here. I really thought I'd get more work done on this. I mean, I guess the week from where I started on Tuesday isn't over, but you know, 112 stitch circumference, two by two rib, that's not something that's gonna take very long. But the thing is, is that just because it doesn't take very long doesn't mean it's gonna magically grow if I don't work on it. And this really has been the lowest priority of my three projects this week. My highest priority project, my lakes, is very close to completion of the second sleeve. I got a lot of this done yesterday and also after the hockey game when we were hosting book club because, you know, stocking it in the round, you can do that without looking and while chatting. But as you can see, compared to the first sleeve, I really don't have a lot left to go. So, you know, now that I'm home from work, I think I will be able to knock this out pretty quickly. And then all that's left is to pick up and knit the collar. I always say double folded collar. I don't know why. I think that phrase is just in, in my head, but it's not a double folded collar. It's just a double layer collar that's folded once. Double folded is what I'm doing for my hat where I'm folding it twice. I'm so sorry if that bugs you every time I say it. It bugs me too watching it back, but I can't seem to stop myself very much. But I'm going to do a folded collar for this. And so on my lakes, and my existing lakes is the reason why my brother wants a lakes of his own. He wore mine in December and decided he'd like one. I, which I do for all my sweaters with folded collars, I do a contrast inner fold of the collar because I have sensitive skin. I don't necessarily knit with the softest of wools, but I do, if I have the chance, swap out a softer wool or fiber in general for the inside where it's going to rest against my neck and my collarbone. And I guess my brother thought that was just part of the pattern. And he said, um, yeah, for example, this is some free cashmere that I held together that came as like a 20 gram sample when I ordered from Color Mart for the first time. So I used that. A little bit of it peeks out when I wear it. And I call this my roadkill sweater because this is beautiful, sweet, undyed sheep. And this reminds me of meat. But I think it's funny um, that I, local vegetarian of eight years, minus a brief break for chemotherapy, um, is wearing a meat sweater. And so my brother said, I, oh, but could we do another color, like a blue or a green for my inside collar? And for me, that's a great excuse to stash bust and scrap bust. I find that the inside band is great for really soft scraps because it doesn't take a lot of yarn. So for his, I'm going to use some of this Merino Nylon Super Wash. It's a DK sock blend that I got from Rose Hill Yarns at Knit City, Montreal last year. And I think the color is Alpine Fur. It was part of a DK weight sock set. I made DK weight socks out of it that I wear. I mean, I wore them in bed last night. And I think that this would look really nice. It's a bit less blue in person and has a little bit of mossy and, and, and browny undertones in real life. But for some reason, this shade of green really shows up. It's quite bluey in on camera. Poseidon actually is like, sorry, the hat actually is kind of bluey, but this one is really green. But I think that that'll be nice as a pop of color for him. So that's great. Use up a little bit of scraps, use up the yarn I have for this, and then have this nicely blocked and finished and folded for when I visit over Easter. 
I have done no progress on the mitten, but I think I will this week. With the end of the mitten project in sight and with the end of my lakes in sight, I am starting to get excited about my next round of projects. And I think when I finish my lakes, I will reward myself with some swatching for upcoming projects to get a sense of if things are gonna work. The first of which is I really wanna make a beauty school pullover by Poison Girl Knits, G-R-R-L. And I want to use, which is a fingering weight, vintage style. I mean, of course, beauty school. It's inspired by the beauty school scene in uh, Greece. In this navy cashmere that I, reclaimed from a sweater my dad gave me for the specific purpose of unraveling it for the yarn. I, this is a, I think a pretty light fingering weight. It's two strands from a store-bought sweater. And I think that that kind of really fitted sweater is exactly what I want 100% cashmere in. I feel like uh, you don't need that much yarn for something that that's with, that's that tight fitted. So it'll go pretty far and be the exact kind of thing I wanna wear close to my skin. I'm also very excited, and this is my priority more than the beauty school, to start a gift for a friend with this yarn, not the green, ignore the green yarn. These yarns held together, this pinky Lanagato silk mohair, and then this Topi Surrey Alpaca from Wollerton Estates. So these yarns are from my friend, Carolyn. I put it down so it'll stop crinkling. Those yarns are from my friend Carolyn, who's getting married in June. I'm very, very excited for her. And I'm knitting her a Georges cardigan by, or wrap by Yo Colibri by Johanna, which is a, you know, two strands of fluffy yarn, bridal-esque pattern. The photos are very bridal. I think the designer herself wore it at her wedding. And I offered to make Carolyn something as a wedding present and she chose this and then wanted me to use her existing special yarn. She's also a knitter, I've talked about her before. And so one of those we picked up at Knit City Montreal together and it's special. And then the other, her friend brought her from Copenhagen where her friend lives. And so it's special yarn and I want to swatch and send her a photo of the swatch to confirm that she does like how these two yarns look at the gauge of the Georges pattern. But that's a 15 stitch gauge pattern. I'm expecting it to go by pretty quickly. And if I can, I'd like to finish it so I can give it to her when I go to Montreal in April. But yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about the next round of projects. And I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me for what I knit in a pretty typical week. I mean, I don't go to a hockey game every week, but you know, focused on work, knitting in the evenings on weekends, a lot of chores, a lot of sitting around the house in various types of schlubby house clothing. This is how I get stuff done. This is what a week looks like for me and the situations in which I'm typically knitting. So I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you for coming along and I will hopefully see you guys in a regularly scheduled podcast very, very soon. Okay, bye for now.